Repetition makes it cemented. We're going to set up three indexers and get really familiar with best practice for how to do that. Connect to your EC2 instance with however you're SSHing into it. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the password for Ubuntu and make the user of Splunk. You're going to do sudo passwd for Ubuntu and then sudo add user for Splunk. Keep all the information the same and click yes. Now that the Splunk user is made and we've changed the password for Ubuntu, let's move into the op directory. As you can see, if we do an ls tac lh, there is nothing in here. So we need to grab our Splunk Enterprise wget command so that we can download it. If you don't have a Splunk account, you have to create one and log in, and it will be available to you in your free trial and download section. Uh, if you just go under your dashboard here and under Splunk platform, I went into Splunk Enterprise, selected the correct OS since I'm using Ubuntu, went to Linux 64-bit and grabbed the TGZ file. So as Ubuntu, we'll do a sudo and then paste in the command. It has a bunch of extra characters here to clean that up. Um, Try pasting that again and take out the tilde and we're off. We're downloading Splunk Enterprise to this instance. Wait for this to finish. All right, let's see that it's here. And you can see that the ownership is under root root. We do not want to operate as the root user we want to operate as the user Splunk. That's why we made the user Splunk. So we're actually going to take ownership of the entire op directory and put it under the owner of Splunk. sudo chone tac r for recursive Splunk Splunk on the directory opt. Now you can see the ownership has changed from root root to Splunk Splunk. Now we are ready to untar the package and we should work as the user Splunk. We can switch to the user, su Splunk, put in our password that we created for the Splunk user, and now we can untar the Splunk Enterprise package. Tar, your switch options are XZVF, and then tab complete and hit enter. We're off. And we're untarring. We'll wait for this to finish. Remember, we're going to do this three times, so uh, if you don't get it the first time, You'll work out all your um, errors and stuff by the third time for sure. And this is the same methodology to follow if you're going to try and install a search ed, deployment server, anything that requires the Splunk Enterprise package, you know, heavy forwarder, pretty much anything that's not a UF. Okay, so it's here. The ownerships look good. Let's move into the bin directory. Here is where we're going to use our Splunk command, our Splunk binary here, to configure our... Um, instance. First command we're going to do is a Splunk status. First time you run a command, you're going to hold the space bar down and just agree to the license usage. And this is where you're going to create your username and password. I'm going with admin, a password that's easy to remember. A good thing to do if you're going to spin up a lot of these like I am, you know, eight instances plus, Use the same username and password for all of your instances. As we can see, the status is not running. So now we can do a Splunk start. And this will wait for our port to become available on the Splunk web port of 8000. Once it is, we're going to switch over to the Splunk web and do some configuration changes through the GUI. All right, we can go back to AWS into our instances because I need the public IP address. It's good if you can configure your instances dashboard to display public and private IP addresses, or you can grab it from the bottom there. You're going to go on port 80 for the first one uh, with the IP address and then on port 8000 and log in with the credentials that you just created.
We're going to make some server changes. So we're going to go into settings under system. We can go into server settings, general settings, and give it a server name that's applicable to what the instance is. So this is the first indexer that we're doing. We want to enable HTTPS. So I hit yes, so we can stop using port 80 and also the default host name is going to be the same indexer one click save all right let's check out the monitoring console to make sure everything is green and showing as enabled for the health checks that it performs and that we're under the correct mode so if you go to settings general setup you can see we're operating in standalone and it has all these server roles assigned to it. So we want to edit and make sure it has only the assigned role that I want it to function as. And this is just going to be an indexer. So we can click save. And currently in standalone, this is eventually going to be a distributed environment. So I'm going to change it to distributed mode. And it just gives you some warnings here. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I am. Go ahead and hit continue and then apply the changes. Now, if you look at our map here, just so that we can visualize what we're doing, this is eventually going to be a clustered index environment. So I'm just gonna spin up all three here with you for indexer one, two, and three, and we're gonna follow the same process. We just completed for indexer one, our um, GUI changes that we wanted to make for the server role go through the health check items, make sure everything is green and a healthy install. And the last thing we wanted to do back on the CLI is do a stop because we want to enable boot start. So we want Splunk D to start up every time this instance is powered off and then powered back on. We want to make sure the boot start is enabled. You have to do this on Linux uh, OS, Windows you do not have to. So we also want to change back to the user of Ubuntu. This is partly, partly why I changed the password for Ubuntu so that I can change back um, into that user. And if I knew how to type boot start here, uh, we could have run it as Splunk as well, but I'm gonna go back to the user of Ubuntu and then do uh, a sudo Splunk enable boot start as the service is currently stopped. So now we can enable it to do a boot start, hit enter, and then it is now configured to run at boot. So indexer one is now complete. Just go back to the Splunk user and I'll let that sit there. So that's not started up again. We're good to go. Now we can move into making indexer number two. We're going to keep all these same tabs open. We just finished IDX one. Now let's do the same exact process for number two. Again, if you're setting up a deployment server or a search head, a heavy forwarder, all of these foundational steps are exactly the same. So we're going to launch a new instance. This one, we're going to call it indexer two, select the AMI of Ubuntu 64 bit architecture. Going to go with the T2 medium build. Select my key pair that I've been using. Select my current firewall settings for um, all of my Splunk ports that I've configured. Uh, this should be loading up here uh, under an existing group. Just going to give it a second. And there it is, Splunk settings. Storage, just throw this at 100 gig as it's an indexer. And that's it. Verify all the settings are correct. And go ahead and launch the instance. That was very quick. So now we can connect to it via putty and we just did all that. And now this is the new CLI for indexer two. First step, I'm going to add the user of Splunk, give Splunk a password, make all of your settings. Yes. 
And we also want to change the password for Ubuntu. sudo passwd ubuntu. All right. Now that we have our user Splunk created and Ubuntu's password is changed, we'll move into the op directory. As you can see, there's nothing in here. So we need to follow the same steps and download using the wget command, the TGZ Splunk Enterprise package. If you hit download now and just kind of stop it from downloading to your local host, we can leverage the command line wget syntax here. I captured some weird characters last time from copying it. So hopefully this time, uh, just hit the here and copy it. Maybe it'll uh, work better. Go back to indexer two, which is this one. And do a sudo, paste in the command in the op directory and hit enter. That went much smoother than last time. I'm telling you, by the time you do it three times, you'll be, you'll be good to go. Okay. If we do an ls tech lh, we see the ownership is root root. Splunk best practice is to use the Splunk user. So a pseudo chown recursively change the ownership to Splunk Splunk on the entire opt directory. And if we do another ls, we are now changed over to Splunk Splunk. We can now operate as the Splunk user. And we can untar the Splunk Enterprise TGZ package. Switch options again, XZVF, and hit enter. And we are untarring. Let this finish. The ownership looks correct under Splunk Splunk. Now we can move into the Splunk bin directory so we can work with our Splunk binaries and command. And we will do a Splunk start, accept the license, hold on the space bar. Do you agree to the license? Yes, I do. Thank you Splunk for being amazing. Set the same username and password. That's just me because I can't remember all the different usernames and passwords I make. And when you get up to a high number of instances, it's just best to keep it all the same. And it will wait to uh, spin up and have port 8000 become available. Once it is, we're going to switch over to the GUI side and access it through the AWS EC2's public IP address. So it is now up. Let's head over there, go back to my instances dashboard. We're on indexer two, grab the public IP address. You can grab it from below, or if you set it up to display both public and private in your dashboard, um, whichever is easiest for you, copy it from the bottom. And remember, we haven't enabled HTTPS yet. So we're going on port 80 over HTTP, the IP, public IP, port 8000 for Splunk web, our username and password that we created in the CLI. And we're gonna make the same changes here. Go to settings, server settings, general settings. Give it a server name that reflects the use case that you're doing. This is indexer two, I need to change that to two. That's a mistake, this is not three, but we'll enable uh, HTTPS, bear with me as I put in three and meant two, and we'll go to the monitoring console to make sure we have a healthy install and also change our server role here. Go into settings, general setup. We have all these server roles assigned, so we'll go ahead and edit the server roles to only have indexer enabled. And click save. And currently it's on standalone. This is going to be a distributed clustered index environment. Apply the changes.
looking at indexer one. Do a refresh here. Just want to bring this back up, uh, make sure it's coming up correctly. This is two, I want to be in one. Splunk show server name, put in my credentials. This is indexer one that I'm on. Splunk status says it's running. All right, go back to the web. Okay, uh, let me take off some of this on the URL. and then put it over HTTPS as we had enabled that. There, there we go. Splunk uses a self-signing certificate, so go ahead and accept the risk. That's why this shows up. And okay, great. We're back up, logging in on indexer one. Let's change this to have the correct name. Just go back into general settings under server settings. And this is supposed to be number two. Let's make that change real quick. Click save. We can do a splunk. Stop. So we can start enabling our boot start here on indexer two. Switch over to Ubuntu. And we're gonna do a sudo splunk enable boot start. And it is now configured to run at boot. And we'll do a Splunk start. All right, great. Indexer two is ready to go now that it has the correct name. Looking at our diagram, we've now completed indexer one on that tab, indexer two on that tab, and third time's the charm, setting up indexer three. And go back to our instances dashboard and hit launch instances. This one is going to be IDX3. I'm gonna do a medium. Select my same key pairs. Going to select my existing security group firewall settings for all of my Splunk ports enabled on the inbound side. Going to throw this at 100 gigs. Verify all these settings are correct and go ahead and launch the instance. Then I'm going to connect to it via PuTTY after it is up and running. OCD is going to get the better of me, so I'd like to change this to not have a space in it. Okay, and we're just waiting for indexer three to get up and running here. While that's getting uh, configured, we can go ahead and open PuTTY. Make all of our setting changes. Put in my PPK file. Set my session timeout. Keep alive every 180 seconds, which is three minutes. And now we are just waiting for, all right, it's up. Go ahead and hit connect. I'm gonna copy the part right here. Paste it in for our host name and hit open. 
hit accept, put in my passphrase that I made when I designed my PPK file, and we'll just make this a little bit bigger. Under the appearance, just change it from size 10 to 20 font. And I like it when my cursor blinks. All right. So same settings uh, that are going to be every time you do um, Splunk Enterprise package. We're going to change the password for Ubuntu here. I'm going to add the user Splunk, sudo add user Splunk. Give Splunk a password. Accept all the defaults, hit yes. I'm going to move into the op directory. I'm going to do the wget command for Splunk Enterprise. Paste it in. Oh. God, I have no luck with these paste commands. Uh, it's not special characters, I just straight up didn't copy it. Copy. <laughs> Alright, paste it in. Hit enter. And we are downloading the TGZ file. If we take a look at who owns it, it's root root. So we need to change the ownership. Pseudo chone, recursively, splunk splunk on the op directory. Looks good. Now we can switch to the Splunk user. And untar it. XZVF, tab complete. And we're untarring and we'll let this finish. All right, ownership looks good. Move into Splunk bin, run our Splunk commands. Splunk start. Hold down that spacebar. Yes, I agreed to the license. Thank you, Splunk, for being awesome. Same username and credentials. And Splunk is starting. While that spins up, we can go ahead and grab the public IP address from our EC2 instance. And we're working under indexer 3. Copy this. We haven't enabled HTTPS yet, so we're going on port 80 on the web port of 8000. Logging in. Settings, server settings, make our server name changes under general settings. DX3 this time, enable HTTPS. IDX3, hit save. Check out the monitoring console to make sure we have a healthy install. Go into settings, general setup. Make sure we have the correct server roles assigned. Edit, edit server roles. It's just going to be an indexer. Click save. Going to be a distributed environment. Continue and apply the changes. Sweet. So there is our third indexer. The only thing we have to do is enable boot start and we've successfully created 
three indexers follow the same process and hopefully it's very repetitive now that you feel confident that you can take this and do the same exact steps when you stand up any server role needed for your Splunk environment.